Hello. Okay. How are you all? Good to see you. Just in the backyard, hoping uh, stuff will happen. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Mom. Hi. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, where is everybody? Where is everybody? It says Lauren is live. Hello. Hello. Oh. Anyway, just here right now. Hanging out with all my BFFs. Hey, what's up, BFFs? Sitting here with my mom. My mom is uh, making a really yummy dinner right now. Very excited about that. Yes, what's up, Lyle? Oops. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, we've got to figure out when we're going to do the eggplant. Oh, we got to make the eggplant. Did you want to do that tonight? Oh, all right. We got to see when we uh, finish everything. Thanks. Nice Ooh, I love eggplants. Hey, everybody. Howdy. So this I got a yard sale, Mom. It was a dollar fifty. What do you think? <laughs> Isn't it cute? It's it's very small. <laughs> it's very small. And these were for free on the side of the road. Aren't these cute, Mom? Yeah, that's good for your makeup in there. Well, this actually had a lot of arts and crafts things. So I was going to give it to you for your summer programs when you do the arts oh, and crafts. Oh, yeah, it says Sadie on it. Oh, I saw the mom. The mom said the kids grew out of them. So she didn't want them anymore. It was Sadie in November. Look, we got all these really cute, oh, heart stickers. These are cute. Look at these, like, uh, felt heart stickers. Aren't they cute? Yeah. My, my dad is just, so they were both filled with, like, arts and crafts kind of stuff, which is fun. How are you? I'm good. I'm good just going through. Hey, what's up, Lance? All the stuff we got. All right. What, Daddy? You don't feel good? Tell them that. All right, guys, pray for my dad. This is an interesting thing here. This is really interesting. I don't know what this is. Mom, is this kind of, some kind of kid's toy? Yeah, that's a... Uh, my mom knows all the kid's toys. A puzzle. A trilogy? What's a trilogy about? Wow. Was well, that the Lance you met? That Lance? No, not that. No, there's one of my fans has the same name as my dad's acting student. My dad got excited. He thought it was an acting student watching. This isn't a root. You are no, you? No, no, but what's it called? Does anyone know what this is, guys? No, no, no. It's a special name. What kind of puzzle is this, guys? It, you have to figure out how to, how to do it. My mom wants to know. Oh, they never heard of the issue. You know, it gets really, there's lots of bugs at night, so that's what I'm dealing with right now. The bugs. So I gotta go check the oh, the sausage. The sausage. All right. Oh, my goodness. What? Does it smell good in the house? Yeah. Oh boy, hey. <laughs> I can't eat that. Why can't you eat sausage? Why not? You're not supposed to have sausage? No. Alright, so guys, I'm going back and forth in my stuff here, seeing what we got in, in these boxes from my yard sailing extravagance. Oh, some beads. This is for my mom and her arts and crafts. calculator. Oh, this is cute. Look at this mirror. I like this mirror. It's always good to have a mirror, guys, so when you're out and you can just kind of like look at it. I think I'm going to take this with me. A very cool mirror. Hi, everybody, and welcome. What are you all saying? You don't like my junk collection. Thank you. All right, going through everything. That, is this something that you got? Oh, a car window protector. This is, it looks like it's yours. Yeah, that's mine. Some Christmas decorations. Ugh. Oh, boy. Going through all 
all of the stuff I got. this not all batteries are created equal all right let's see well this is kind of cool daddy look <laughs> <Batteries don't work>. uh. <laughs> If it was plugged in, maybe it would work. Maybe a hole. Maybe a hole in the uh, balloon. It's kind of fun. No? Hi. Oh, we got 50 stars. Thank you guys for giving me some stars. I appreciate you. Thank you, Glenn Newley. Yay. Oh, Frederick said it doesn't work. Another Frederick, Daddy. Somebody has their name. Going a little bit closer. Hello. It's cool that you collect many things. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate your uh, appreciation for my collecting. I love to collect stuff. Uh, we're here in the backyard. Maybe we should read a book. Daddy, you think we should read? Yeah. My dad thinks reading. He didn't like my reading. Oh, here's a bag of clothes I have to wash. I got some clothes from the thrift store. Um, my dad said I should not be buying clothes anymore. So, I just threw a bunch of stuff in here. Have to go through it all. It's like a bug or something. This was brand new. I got it at a garage. Uh, it was like a, like a, like a woman. This unit garage sale. It's a, it's a kid size uh, thing, but it's a dance outfit for working out. Cause I need to start working out again. Isn't this cute? Dance skin. Oh, 200 stars. Who sent me 200 stars? Thank you, Jacob, Malcolm. And thank you so much, Vaughn, for saying that I look amazing. Love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What are y'all saying? Oh, hi. Yes. Just hanging out right now, looking at the stuff I got. Going through all the bugs flying around my face right now. It's really uh, not a fun out. I gotta put all this stuff in the wash. I definitely do. All right. Guys, I love Garfield. So if anyone wants to, somebody was like, oh, what's on your Amazon wish list? And I haven't updated in a while. If anyone has Garfield stuff, feel free to send it over. <laughs> I love me some Garfield stuff. All right. Well. I guess I'm going to just throw this in bags and wait to bring it inside. I should get a book for you guys to read. You should get a book to read. Hello. Oh, my goodness. More stars. Oh, thank you so much, Robert Woodman. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Hey, Andrew McFudge. I'm just itching. I have the bugs here are driving me nuts. Well, you can see because I'm in a bathing suit. But, uh, yeah, it's crazy. There are so many bugs outside. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, glad to see you streaming again. Thank you guys. You know, every day it's a, it's a thing. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to stream today. Kobe said more shopping. Morning. You know, it's easy to go shopping around here. I think I spent $10 on those clothes. So super easy. Oh, wow. All right. I'm going to, thank you so much. I'm actually shooting a calendar. Um, my mom has been helping me take photos in the calendar, so that's very exciting. And this is one of the suits for the calendar, and we're going to sell everything. I'm raising money. I know we're shooting Pay to Die soon, but I want to shoot a Space Girl movie. So all the clothes that I'm selling will go towards Space Girl. Hold on. I'm going to go get a book to read to you guys.
be mean to shoot a guy. Or just saying, are you gonna walk me? <laughs> Alright. Hopefully this will be good enough. Alright. And here we go, guys. Okay. Oh my goodness, thank you so much, Glenn Newley. We're gonna read now. I can barely hear you over here. Oh boy. All this is life. Oh my goodness, thank you, Glenn Newley. All right, so guys, what do you wanna know? All right, are, should we read The Power of Self-Confidence or The Mysteries of the Alphabet? Let me know. Which would you rather? I, I need to know, but I don't know how to start. I feel like that's like a problem everyone has. Where is the pool? I'm in New Jersey right now, so the lake is over there. Oh, multiple beaches reporting high bacteria levels. That must be because of the heat. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm itching the bug bites on my legs right now. It is crazy here. All right. The power of self-confidence. All right. We're gonna get into it. Guys, remember this chair? I fixed it a while ago. Get away from me, bugs. But it looks like this piece is coming apart again. So I'm gonna have to do a live stream. I'm gonna have to go to Home Depot and buy like a metal piece and try to put it back. All right, let's read the power of self-confidence. Get away, bugs. These bugs are just eating me right now. It's very frustrating. Grandma Moses. When Grandma Moses, as she came to be called, was a young farm girl, she had a desire to paint. But her family and friends told her that this was nonsense. They told her that as a farm girl, her role in life was to marry a farm boy and to have and raise farm kids. So she put her heart's desire aside and she did what she thought she was supposed to do. She had children by the time she was out of her teens, and more children in her 20s. In her 40s, she became a grandmother, and in her 60s, a great-grandmother. When she turned 75, her husband was dead and her children were grown, and the doctor told her that she was too old to work on the farm any longer. She felt that she didn't have much time left, so she decided to fulfill her heart's desire and do some painting before she passed on. She went to a nearby town and visited an art store, the person in the art store sold her some paint and canvases and brushes and showed her how to use them. She went back to her farm and she sat down and began painting what came to be called primitive American landscapes. Grandma Moses finished her painting when she was 78. When she was 101, a major gallery in New York City had, shown, had showings of her work in the last 10 years. Some of her paintings were selling for more than 100,000 each. Now here's the rub. She was told as a young girl that she couldn't paint because it cost too much and no one could afford it. Yet when she began painting, she earned more in a year from her paintings than she had. She and her husband had earned in an entire lifetime. Wow, isn't that crazy? That's so crazy. So of a hard work on the farm. She was not only a complete natural, she was also totally original talent. It's been estimated that if she had begun painting in her late teens as she really wanted to, and her paintings had been as successfully commercial as they are today, she might have been one of the richest women in America. Isn't that crazy? It's looking great, white and clean. Yes, but look, look, it's, it's breaking. I think it's because my dad was leaning on it heavy. Maybe my dad needs to work out, I don't know. But um, yeah, guys, reading uh, The Power of Self-Confidence. What's up, Cheeky Charles? Always so good to see you. Always so great to be hanging out. And yeah, reading right here. Just hanging out, excited about pay to die. We raised over 75,000 now and we start shooting at the end of the month. So it's gonna be really cool. And yeah, thank you guys for watching, going through it. Follow your heart. The history of the human race is written in the life stories of men and women who followed their heart's desires. 
and did what they were uniquely qualified to do and did it with all their heart. And no matter what your situation, this possibility lies open to you right now. Colonial Harrell Sanders was 66 years old before he sold his first chicken based on his Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe. He had been working as a cook as the owner of a small cafe all his life, preparing fried chicken with his recipe. Then, at the age of 66, when he started doing what he should have been doing decades before, he began building his franchise business and became one of the best known and wealthiest people in the world. A young man, 16 years old, one of my students, became so excited about his potential that he started his own food service business and made a success of it. He sold it at the profit by the time he was 18. His accomplishment and his confidence as a result were so impressive that when he went to work for a mayor grocery chain, they promoted him up the ladder so fast. Before the end of his 18th year, he became the youngest full manager of a grocery store in America. So you guys, so it's kind of like you can do anything that you put your mind to, right? We can do anything that we, that we want to do and we should do it. Hey everybody, what's going on? Courage and confidence are essential. Countless men and women have written to me and returned to my seminars around the country. And they have told me that the stunning summing up the courage to do what they really wanted to do was a turning point in their lives. Some of them had dramatically increased their incomes five and 10 times, although many had not. In every case, they were working harder than ever before. But as a result, they were happier than they had ever been. Their postures are strong and straight and their eyes shine. Their voices are clear. Their language is positive and it's obvious that they are really enjoying their lives. They have a calm, quiet confidence in themselves that is unmistakable and it makes them stand out from others around them. Your development of confidence and mastery and self-confidence goes without it. Actually, beginning with self-analysis and self-awareness Socrates said that beginning of all wisdom and understanding is contained in many words. The man know thyself. In analyzing yourself to determine what it is that would be ideal for you, there are six approaches you can do. First, ask yourself these questions. What talent, skills, and abilities do you have that seem to be natural to you? Oh... Um, Royal Navy, I think it's my, um, hold on. My mic is broken. That's the problem on my other phone. What have you been able to do easily and went well in the past that seems difficult for other people? What subjects in school and what parts of your work have you naturally gravitated towards? What did you most enjoy doing between ages seven and 14? Ask your mother. I gotta go ask my mom. What did I enjoy doing between seven and 14? Hmm. This is often a predictor of what you should be doing as an adult. Hmm. What parts of your work do you love to do and seem to do well? I think I loved between um, seven and 14, I've always loved shopping. Like, can shopping be my work? I need a new mic. I do. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you so much. What work or activities give you a natural high? They give you energy, full of with enthusiasm, and you lose track of time when you are doing them. Shopping. <laughs> Garbage hunting. I turn my other two streams and I still barely hear you. Oh, I need a, um, I need my headstones. Carly, yes, shopping can. Yeah, like, what can you do? How do you make money for shopping, Carly? Please let me know. Because in this case, I maybe need to change my profession. <laughs> it is what I truly enjoy. It is what I am passionate about. It's just a very expensive hobby. And I have no space for it. Everything. Okay. Every person is put on this earth with a unique combination of talents and inclinations that make him or her different from anyone else who's ever lived. And it only is when you find the special situation that can most benefit your unique capabilities 
that you will be able to make the greatest contribution and enjoy the great rewards, both tangible and intangible. Finding the right job for you and then becoming excited at that job is one of the chief responsibilities of adult life. Ooh, what do you think, guys? I can hear. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway. Hi. Yes. I hear the dogs right now. I'm just trying to decide if I should go inside and look for the headphones so you guys can hear me better or if we should just hang out and and see. All right. Here we go. The four quadrants of work. An excellent exercise in self-discovery is for you to divide your work activities into four quadrants. This was first suggested by Viktor Frankl, the founder of Logotherapy. The four quadrants are divided by what is hard to learn versus what is easy to learn and what is hard to learn versus what is easy to do. Hmm. Quadrant one, hard to learn, hard to do. Quadrant two, easy to learn, hard to do. Quadrant three, hard to learn, easy to do. Quadrant four, easy to learn, easy to do. Quadrant one, in the first quadrant, you will find those jobs and activities that are hard to learn and hard to do. These are probably areas for you which have no natural facility and from which you get very little pleasure, like a salesperson having to do detailed account reports and financial analysis, or a computer programmer expected to make sales calls or do public speaking. The individual and the occupation are not suited to each other. They are hard to learn and always hard to do. I'm just listening to the sound of nature outside right now. It's very beautiful. Quadrant two. This quadrant contains things that are easy to learn, but hard to do. Hard physical labor might fall into this category, like digging a ditch with a shovel. It's easy to learn, but it's always hard to do. Quadrant three. This quadrant contains those jobs or activities that are hard to learn, but easy to do. Driving a car or typing with a typewriter might fall into this category. They are difficult to learn at first, but once you have learned them, they were easy to do afterwards. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Quadrant four. This quadrant in terms of what you should ideally be doing is most important. These are jobs that are easy to do and they are, were so easy to learn that you often forgot how you learned them at all. These are in, invariably the types of jobs or the kind of work at which you excel and which you are most almost effortless for you, although they may be difficult for others. This is the work or job that you should be doing with your life. What do you think, guys? Listening to the sounds of the, the bugs outside right now. Thank you guys for the stars. I love stars. I appreciate you. Thank you for following. Um, if you can do me a favor and share the stream, that would be helpful. Share my live stream. Oh, I'm just itching my arm right now. That felt good. I can hear you and see you. Thank you, Mark, so much. We're sitting here in my summer house, hanging out, listening to the sounds of the cicadas. Oh. Loving this. I just retried. What did you retry? To share? I want to know. Oh, you just retired. I'm like, <laughs> congratulations. Retiring sounds fun. Even though I don't really have a job to retire from. So acting is weird. Acting is such a weird job. It really is. Anyway, listening to my parents inside, my mom made some sausages I'm really excited about eating. All right. Hello, how do I say poche? Is that how I say it? Oh, thank you, Steve Calderon, you're so sweet. Let's see, this is better maybe. Do you hear me better? 
I like easy to learn, easy to do. Me too, Carly. Oh, thank you, Glenn Newley, so much for the 25 stars. It's hard. Like the other day, I built a, a fire pit and I was digging. And that was like, it was easy, but it was hard to do. So it was just, it was really hard. The next day, I was so sore. Like, it made me want to work out more. But I don't know, like, do those uh, jobs that are like physical labor, do they uh, get easier or harder over time? I'm also kind of like, we cut, we trimmed a bunch of those vines and because we, how we trimmed them, some of them died. So I feel bad for the pieces that died. <coughs> oh my goodness, some of these comments, they're very interesting. Oh, Steve said you need to get married. Thank you, I guess. I need to find a husband first. I've, I, I think like at first I was like, it's me, but like, I think like I just, you know, I like being single. It's fun. I get bored easy. <laughs> you know. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, relationships are really hard. I, you know, anyone here watching that's married or in a relationship, I definitely give you credit. It's very, it's a lot of work to stay with the same person for that much time. <laughs> relationships are hard. I look at my parents, I'm like, how do you do it? How? Just how? All right, let's get back into reading. Okay. Examine your work history. Look back over your life and ask yourself, what activities, behaviors, or decisions have been most responsible for success in life to date? It's like bugs biting me, like small little bugs. <laughs> oh, Steve said love. That's a really good point. <laughs> it's hard for me to do that too. Okay. You will probably find that less than 5% of things that you have said or done have accounted for most of the success you have enjoyed. You may find that it was your unique ability to solve a particular kind of problem or to take advantage of a particular type of opportunity. You may find that your special talent was an interpersonal skill that enabled you to influence and persuade other people at a particular time and place. You may find on analysis that it was an ability to take charge and acceptance, accept responsibility for accomplishing a particular goal. Whatever has been responsible for your success in life to date may be a good indication that you should be doing it in the future. Mm, that's a good uh, point. So like things that kind of help me get where I am now, like the internet stuff, I shouldn't just stop doing them. I should keep doing them. That's, you know very uh, smart, smart person who wrote this book. We were reading The Power of Self-Confidence by Brian Tracy. I forget where I got this. I definitely was like either a yard sale or a thrift store and one of the boxes of free books. In my office, I put up frames with pictures that came in the frames. That way everyone at work thinks all my friends and family are very good looking. <laughs> That's a good idea. Definitely, and it also makes you think, makes people think like, oh, I have, I have friends, I do. Look at all these people. <laughs> Love it. Design your ideal work life. It's like you read my mind what I was gonna read. Um, describe in detail the amount of money you would like to earn, the kind of work you would like to do, the size and character of the company you would like to work for, the type of people you would like to sell to and the level of responsibility or position you would like to attain. As you think through the kind of job that would make you happy, you may find that it is a completely different field than any you are in now. A woman who was working as an accounting clerk at the computer sales company in New Jersey noticed how much the salespeople were earning and decided that she wanted to get into telephone sales herself. When she applied for the job, she was told that she had two applications, selling and accounting, were totally different, and that a person from accounting had very little probability of success. Ooh, little bugs jumping on me, biting me. Nevertheless, oh, thank you. 
she kept trying and asking to try selling. And finally, she was given a chance to replace a salesperson who was on vacation. Today, the company sells more than 17 million per year in software and computer peripherals, largely over the phone. This woman is so good at selling that accounts for more than 50% of the total revenues. Oh my goodness. She went from earning 2,500 per month to almost a half a million dollars per year. Wow, I have chills. I have chills. Best of all, she has never been happy her entire life. Wow. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for the nice compliments. I'm just sitting here reading right now, uh, feeling the bugs biting me. Maximize your return on energy. I don't know what that means. Analyze your work based on the measure that I call return on energy. Leaders in every field deliberately apply their talents and energies where they can achieve their greatest return on the amount of energy, mental, emotional, and physical, that they invest in any endeavor. They refuse to take on jobs or work in areas where they cannot perform at exceptional levels. They treat themselves as valuable resources and they spend their energies very carefully. One of the questions that you might continually ask yourself is, is this the best possible use of my time and energy? Is what you are doing right now the most valuable thing that you could be doing, given your particular combination of talents and abilities? Often answering this question will help you do to see that there is a vast difference between what you are currently doing and what you should be doing if you want to be fulfilling more than your potential. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. The mic is messed up. Uh. <laughs> Very funny, Royal Navy. Do what you love. Marsha Sintar wrote a top selling book a few years ago whose title says it all. Do what you love and the money will follow. Almost every successful happy man or woman will say that the reason for their success is that they are doing what they love to do. Thank you guys, thank you. Whenever a person is unhappy for any reason, I always ask them how much they enjoy their work and would they choose to do this type of work if there were other options open to them. Invariably, when someone is generally unhappy with their life, especially a man, they are just satisfied with their work for some reason. Mm. Thank you so much, Charles. Unfortunately, there is an old myth in that our society that suggests that work is a penalty you pay during the day so that you can get enjoyment from other things and evenings and so on on the weekends. Many people view work as a punishment that is unavoidable. They try to do it as well and they think they need to do so so they don't get fired and they never really think about whether they really enjoy it. However, this attitude is not for you. Your life is too precious and valuable to spend it doing something you don't enjoy. Every minute of it should be spent doing things that you love and care about and that make you happy. The wonderful thing is that the highest paid people in America and worldwide are often working at jobs that they enjoy so much that they hate to go home at night. And the lowest paid people are invariably found at jobs they dislike in which they are going through the motions. So guys, you understand? I'm going to just take a break at that point. And it's like... Yeah, that's so true. Like people who really love what they do make more money because they're really good at it, right? Or they're getting more money for what they do. What's an, what is that, Glenn? Oh, what is it? What is that? I don't even know what that is. I don't even want to say that out loud. Maybe you can send me a link to what it is or I should put it on my Amazon wish list. I don't know. <laughs> What's up, Charles Gizzard? How are you? But yeah, I'm just sitting on my rocking chair that I got out of the trash uh, a few years ago. It was in two pieces, guys. I don't remember if uh, you watched me on Facebook put it back together. But this was in two pieces. And I glued and painted and just put the whole thing back together. Because I didn't have anything else to do during the live stream. <laughs> so, I mean, that was fun. It was a lot of fun. But anyway... I'm just sitting here. Um, my mom is making uh, some dinner. I might come back later and do, she wants to make some eggplant. So hmm, that sounds like it would be really yummy. I might come back later and make some eggplant. But anyway, guys, I love you so much. 
I'm going to wrap this up and take George for a walk before it gets too late. All right, guys, I will see you later. Wow, Charles, you've been subscribed for 21 months now? Whoa, that's so cool. Thank you so much, Charles Humphrey, for subscribing to my content. Um, you all can subscribe. Also, if you have Amazon, you get a free one free Twitch sub. So if you're on Amazon Prime, make sure to go to my Twitch. You can subscribe for free. I think September, too, it's half off. So, yeah. Um, somebody wrote, I don't like my job. Oh, thank you, Glenn, Glenn Newley. Thank you so much, Glenn Newley. Somebody wrote, I don't like my job um, when I was working, but close to retirement to quit. Yeah, it's it's definitely hard, guys. You really got to, you know, think about what you like to do. Not funny. It's a bad connection. Broken mic is still technically works. Life, Royal Navy, life. We try to make it worth, worth, work. How did I make you laugh, Anthony? How? How did you, what, what was so funny? I want to know. Um, all right, guys. I am uh, really hungry. Okay. I'll see you guys later. I'm going to maybe come back. Okay. Bye.